Hello, and thank you for joining us for Hello, Mayor. I'm City of Las Vegas Mayor Carolyn Goodman. Being in the global spotlight is nothing new to us in Las Vegas, but the reason behind all of the attention right now is something new to us. In case you hadn't heard, we were selected to host Super Bowl 58. It's a highly coveted designation and it takes enormous amount of work and community involvement. With us for this show is the man who's been called the brains behind the bid to the bowl, Sam Joffrey. We'll talk about all the economic benefits and entertainment surrounding the big game. Then a little later, we'll talk with Andrew Simon, CEO of the Fremont Street Experience, about some of the great things to do downtown if you don't get one of those coveted seats in Allegiant Stadium. So first, President and CEO of the Super Bowl Host Committee, Sam Joffrey. Welcome and thank you so much. I'm so excited about this. Hello, Mayor. <laughs> I feel like you have to start the show off with a hello, Mayor. Right? So every guest have to say hello, well, Mayor. <laughs> you're quite a remarkable guy. I know you've been down in New Orleans and uh, taking care of Super Bowl. You had three Super Bowls down there, I... but you uh, also helped in Arizona and now you're getting us going. Yeah, I was lucky enough in New Orleans to work for an organization that served as the host committee for all the major events. So we put together the bids and then we would put together the host committees for, you said it, three, three Super Bowls, a number of Final Fours, uh, WrestleManias, college football championship games. Wow. We had a nice sustainable organization that would go from one event to the other. So we're either bidding on one or we're hosting one. So we like to say we're either booking them or cooking them. Well, um, I know you point. can do it all. What's your background that you got into this? Are you a frustrated athlete or something? Oh or were boy, you, uh, I don't know how long you? this show is. But <laughs> I actually came from a theater background. I was a, a, a theater director and teacher. And then wow. life took me in a different direction and uh, I was teaching at the time. And then uh, when I stopped teaching, I uh, cold called the NFL because I was doing websites at the time. Yes. And we were doing websites and software solutions for media. And the Super Bowl was coming to New Orleans in 1997. So in 1996, I started calling New York and I remember I had the phone number, the storm number, 212-450-2000. called the switchboard and said, I want to talk to somebody about an idea I've got for Super Bowl when you come here next year. And uh, we did a website. We did some software solutions for them. And mm -hmm. as part of that, I got connected with the host committee there and started providing other solutions with them. NFL kept me on as a contractor to run part of the media operations every year for them. Oh. So for that 20-plus years, I was either... Uh, working on the Super Bowl as a future host, as a current host, as a bidding host, or as a contractor helping with the media operations. For the, so I've been very fortunate that Super Bowl's been part of my life every year since 1997. And so much of it is acting and the theatrics of it all. You know, it's, I more, love the, it. it's more the directing side of it. It's really <laughs> building a cast, building an ensemble, putting together the sets, the scripts, you know, the, 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 the workflow of a theatrical production is very similar. It's just a much longer rehearsal period for a Super Bowl than it is for a, for a play. So where we might have sent, spent six to eight weeks rehearsing a, rehearsing a play, for Super Bowl it takes you about two years. But you so still have a lot of those same. You came right out of Arizona when we got the bid to come here. So what has what have been the first things you've done? I know you have volunteers, and I know you have multitude of committees. So if you back up to 2021, coming out of COVID, um, we're in the middle of COVID. Uh, that's when Las Vegas was invited to bid, and uh, the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority was staring down the barrel of this 186-page bid document and got my name, uh, having just done it for New Orleans, I had just gotten 2024 awarded for New Orleans, oh. worked on that effort, <clears throat> and then had to work to redo that bid because the NFL changed their schedule. They went to a 17 game season, which moved the Super Bowl by a week, mm -hmm. put the Super Bowl on top of Mardi Gras, and in our bid for 2024, we had some fine print that said, oh, by the way, if you change the date of the Super Bowl, New Orleans might not be able to host because of Mardi Gras, so we get the next year, or we get to bid on the next year. So went through the bid process, got 24 awarded, all those triggers happened. Then we rebid for 25. That left the hole in 24 for the calendar for the NFL. That's when they invited Las Vegas to bid. That's when the Convention Visitor Authority said, heard that I had just done this back to back twice. 
Uh, so I was very familiar with the bid process uh, and everything that you know the NFL was asking for at the time. So I came on board in 2021, uh, almost the whole year, to help the LVCVA with that bid. Uh, they ran point on everything. Amazing, amazing uh, year that we had there putting together that bid. Um, and then once you're awarded the Super Bowl, then you're required to create a nonprofit 501c6 Las Vegas Super Bowl host wow. committee. So that was created in January of 22. And that's now the organization that we have is a full-time staff, uh, full-time temporary. So over the next few months as we wind things down, everybody will kind of uh, redefine their roles. Um, but that, that host committee is then responsible for fulfilling all those promises we made during the bid process. So we're, where we said we're gonna do this, that, and the other thing, the host committee then raises the money, puts together the staff, recruits the volunteers, puts together the committee, and starts to deliver on all those obligations. So it's a, it's a, a hefty lift. It's everything from transportation to team hotels to staffing, public safety, um, mm -hmm. the, all, the, all the transportation throughout the week, finding venues for the NFL, making sure that everything's placed in the right kind of uh, environment. And uh, so yeah, our full-time staff now is, has been Well, and now away. we have the two final teams, the 49ers and, and the Chiefs. And now we're down to two teams, that's and, right. And uh, I remember in 67 was the first Super Bowl. We'd moved here in 64. And strangely enough, as I, I double-checked it this morning, the Chiefs we're in the first uh, Super Bowl with Len Dawson. I remember watching it. And so this is so super exciting. I mean, those were the Vince Lombardi days yeah. and Bart Starr. It was um, my mom and dad had two daughters. My father wanted the second one to be a boy because he was nuts about sports. So tell us a little bit about the activities beyond the game that our population can enjoy and go to and the tourists that are coming here and filling our 100 155,000 hotel rooms. Yeah, so you know, we think about the game that's on Sunday. Obviously, when that kicks off Sunday afternoon, uh, that's the culmination of this whole effort. So, you know, uh, I'm sure you've seen for the past year we've been doing activities from Business Connect programs for DBE local businesses to recruiting volunteers, working with UNLV students as interns, doing all this work that mm -hmm. all is going to culminate with this game on Sunday. But the Super Bowl really is, I like to say, we're hosting it right now. We are in the middle of hosting it. There are already staff here. There are already contractors and vendors here. Um, we're already working on hotel things. We're ready for the teams to arrive on Sunday. Um, once the teams arrive, then the official events kick off. Uh, and they're staying out at the lake. They're out the, yep. And absolutely. both teams are out there, so you had to make sure all that, or does that go to the team part? Um, that was get part them of the, back and forth to practice? Do they practice in the Legion, or are they using one of the other we, facilities? Uh, that was part of the bid process that you then kind of tweak over the next couple of years, but uh, their hotels are both out in Lake Las Vegas. Uh, one team is practicing at UNLV, the other team is practicing at the Raiders facility, so there okay. is transportation back and forth every day for that. Um, and they have to switch that out to make it equitable, I'm sure. Not one team only being using one facility. No, actually, we, we make sure it's that right? it's equitable. The teams Glad. all came in for yeah. site visits last week. We Glad. showed them some, some things that we did at UNLV. Uh, they saw what's available at the Raider facility and, and all Is four teams. Is the public allowed to go to UNLV no, those or are all go? Closed. Yeah, closed. the practice okay. sites are completely closed. Um, the first thing the public's invited to, though, is, the, is Monday. The two teams will go to Allegiant Stadium, and there will be about 4,000 members of the media that are invited for the first time wow. to see them. Uh, the the field of the of at stadium will host both teams back to back. Very big production, nationally televised. It's called Opening Night, and um, that televised event is also available for the public to attend. So you can go and you can sit and you can for see. Free? Uh, the tickets are available on Ticketmaster. Okay, so is it modest though? I mean, very can, modest, very extremely modest. Okay. modest. I, I think okay. anybody would be shocked if they okay. saw the price okay. on these. I want to make sure. Especially if they got in go. on the presale a while back. When the okay. presale happened, it was almost uh, ridiculous how cheap, how affordable it was. Um, well, that's exciting. So you can though. spend up to four hours there at the stadium watching the media interview the two teams. Now it doesn't sound exciting, but the way they set it yeah. up with all the podiums. And you have the ability to tune in and listen to each interview if you want to. 
awesome. it's not just sports media. There'll be entertainment tonight and, uh, you know, crazy podcasters and wacky radio guys. And it is quite the circus on, on Monday and night. And if we're in the stands watching this, they have the big uh, They'll monitors, have a production everything. level. There will be music. There'll be entertainment in between the and two teams. And can they buy uh, food and stuff? Oh, concessions are certainly open. Good. Yep, concessions Wonderful. are certainly open. So that's really, if you want to see what it's like to be inside the stadium for Super Bowl Sunday, yes. that will probably give you your first flavor of it. The decor will be up. And again, the time. When uh, does that start? When I think can doors you open get at three o'clock, um, okay. and then we can. And get Monday. You, Monday. So that's Monday. That's the official kickoff to everything. Okay. Then what? So then the next big fan interactive event starts on Wednesday at Mandalay Bay. It's called the Super Bowl Experience, and it is kind of an amusement park of all things NFL. So it's autograph sessions, it's merchandise, it's kick kick a field goal for to win prizes. It's uh, oh, very nice family fun. friendly. Uh, priced again, very family friendly. You can find all this information on our website, uh, lvsuperbowlhc.com. So if you're putting that up on the screen, yes, LV yeah. is in Las Vegas, Super Bowl, HC is in hostcommittee.com. Okay. All the information on these events are there. But the Super Bowl experience opens up on Wednesday night. Wednesday night, they call it a sensory um, sensitivity night. So it's, it's, it's a toned down version of it for those uh, people who maybe don't like the flashing lights or the loud noises. Okay. So it's a calmer environment on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, it opens up again, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, all day long on Saturday. Exactly the same thing. Same thing, but that, they'll have all the people. lights and all the glitz and, and, and bigger crowds right. um, on those days. But if you're a true NFL fan, uh, you're going to find something there from every team. You're going to be able to take a picture with the Lombardi. Uh, you'll be able to see a lot of his uh, memorabilia. Um, now, interact, autographs with the players be, or no? There are autographs, not the Super Bowl players, but tons of player autograph sessions all throughout the week. And how does one get there and make sure that they get there? Uh, not to take vehicles, take public transportation? There is, parking there is parking available at Mandalay Bay, but we also encourage ride share is usually the, the simplest thing these days. Um, so if you can ride share or the deuce okay. uh, is a good you option. Keep to get going. Done. Let's go to Friday and Saturday and then Sunday. So Super Bowl Experience runs uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay. Um, downtown Las Vegas. So if you come downtown uh, on Fremont Street, just to get a feel for what Super Bowl's like, they're gonna have some beautiful displays. Beautiful canopy, I believe, is gonna be lit up, some live music. Not official Super Bowl NFL events because- You have to be. This is kind of interesting. We, we looked very hard at Fremont Street and how do we make that an official Super Bowl event? The, when you do become an official Super Bowl event, there's a certain level of security you have to implement. Okay. There's a certain level of protection from ambush marketing you have to do and signage. And we kind of felt like after everything we looked at for over a year on that, why touch Fremont Street? It's kind of the bourbon street of Las Vegas. Why change what works? Why not right. just enhance it with Super Bowl decor and make it feel like a Super Bowl event? Because honestly, I can't think of a Super Bowl event that's as fun as Fremont Street in the first place. So well, that's with the stages that you guys have it. and the music and everything else that goes on down here, um, I think that it's going to be a pretty special place to be with lots of photo ops, obviously, when the Viva Vision's going. And if you're an NFL fan and want to join with other fans in mass, I think Fremont Street's going to be the place to be. Well, all we've come a long way since 2003 when we tried to get an ad placed during Super Bowl. Yep. And of course, we're turned down because we were gambling mecca. But then, of course, the Supreme Court, I think it was 2018, said that uh, sports wagering would be legitimate. And of course, every state, if not all, but most of them, picked that up. So that mm -hmm. really helped us a lot. And that's why I think we have this wonderful event coming. And I think we're in line for another one. So what have you found out is, um, unique and that we need to maybe look at besides our road construction. I know there isn't a street that doesn't have some sort going on. Lots of progress, as we like to say. There's lots of progress going on in the streets. Well, um, that's a good way to look. I think what's really unique about Las Vegas is that in most cities, when you're putting together a plan to host a Super Bowl, you start with the biggest asset that they need, which is the stadium. Check. Right. Everybody has that now. Right. But then for these events like we just talked about, the Super Bowl experience, the, the, the media center where 6,000 members of the media are working all day, you need hundreds and hundreds of thousands of square feet of convention center space. In most cities, 
You start oh. there and you go, oh, we have a convention center. We'll program that first and then build the rest of the plan around that. Mm -hmm. Well, here in Las Vegas, we've got more square footage of convention center space. There was four different scenarios that we could have hosted this Super Bowl between the okay. convention center and Mandalay Bay and some of the other property ballrooms and convention center spaces that, you know, the next Super Bowl here in Vegas may look a little bit different in the way it's laid out and planned out because we can take advantage of that luxury of being able to say, well, let's do it I love the fact that the airport was really from almost every hotel room ahead in the bed. You mm -hmm. know, you're a half an hour and it's not an hour outside, but the convention space and uh, just the entertainment, there's such a diversity in entertainment. But uh, all the things that when you look at it, for most of us can't afford to buy a ticket, um, certainly the excitement of the other events. What do you see on the back side of it when, when we close down? Does everything stop? Is there any closing down final event the night of the Super Bowl other than what goes on on the field? We'll have an official handoff press conference on Monday morning where hopefully, knock on wood, we're talking about everything that went right and uh, officially handing it off to New Orleans to host next year. After that, our host committee will then regather and uh, start to do a lot of post-event recaps, uh, reports, take all this data that we've collected over the past two years, because for this Fabulous. Super Bowl, we didn't have a playbook. We had to write everything from scratch. Well, and that's why you're so important, because well, really you've been doing it and you've learned from experience, you know what the potholes are and how you can improve it. So we're excited and thrilled that you're here and that you've well, been thank you. here. Thank you. The, um, yeah, I think the special thing is all the things that we've created through this host committee for two years, finding a way for them to live on for the next sporting event or until the next Super Bowl mm -hmm. itself. So our Business Connect program, our internship program, our volunteer program, you know, we've got these databases now of, of volunteers who've stepped out to help or businesses who've been part of this. How many volunteers do you have this I think Well, we, we recruited at least 7,000. Um, Isn't that incredible? Yeah, and that was done almost overnight. I was just shocked when we saw the, the number of applications come in and the speed in which they came in. So real testimony to, to Las Vegas, uh, our residents and and the community of how everybody wanted to be part of it. it is a, it's a pretty special time to be, to be able to look back and say I was part of that first Super Bowl in Las Vegas. It is. It, it just, you know, for two of us, my husband and me, we've been here since 64 to see this finally happen. Not only to have a pro team of our own and several other franchises, but to have the Super Bowl. It's the most exciting thing and we hope it will be the first of many to come. And we know it just is a sport everybody loves and with um, Purdy and uh, what he is he, Mr. Inconsequential or <laughs> and, and uh, draft Patrick, pick. yeah, the last draft pick to come up and be playing in a Super Bowl and then Patrick Mahomes. We're just so excited. It should be a great game. It should be a, another level of VIP and celebrity like we've never seen at a Super Bowl, I think. Um, I think uh, I think we're going to redefine what it's like to, to host a Super Bowl because what Vegas does every year on Super Bowl weekend is already so special. The parties, the oh, yeah. the action, the uh, you know the fans, if they're not going to the actual Super Bowl, they come here. So now we're taking the actual Super Bowl and putting it on top of that crowd. Um, I think it's going to be redefining. Well, and what's wonderful is your experiences in life that got you ready to take on this orchestral piece <laughs> that you're doing or a drama that you've created. And unfortunately, at this moment, we need to take a break. And uh, when we return, Andrew Simon, I mentioned, who's president and CEO of the Fremont Street Experience, will join us to talk about some of the things Sam's have referred to about the exciting downtown events surrounding the Super Bowl. So you may want to put that on your calendar, too. But Sam, we thank you so much. We're going to watch yeah. for you. Hopefully, you're front and center of one of the pictures among one of your committees or all of them. And I can't ask you on uh, in public because I'd hate to do that. But I'm going to ask you when you leave, who's your, uh, who are you betting on? When I leave here? <laughs> when you leave this show right now. I oh, want to know I'm, who I'm you're betting I'm heading right back on. to the office. I'm not going to a sports <laughs> book. <laughs> I think I'm oh, betting that Taylor like, Swift might actually make it and be in the Oh, in my gosh. How's she's that? almost How's as that? exciting for people <laughs> as the actual Super Bowl. They watch her, and I can't believe it. They're betting, is it's, she going to get out of Tokyo and get back here? It's another level so, of enthusiasm yeah, about this game. It's wonderful, but we're so grateful to you, and mm, thank, thank you, you very so much. much thank Sam. you for all your partnership Thank you for coming down, and we're here. 
and we look forward to your being back. Or loving it so much you come to live here with us. I am. I'm not leaving. I'm but here for it, you. It's the best place in the world. I Thank agree. you. Just a little water in the road. The light is green, there's places to go. It's just a little water in the road. The flash flood grows, how deep, who knows? The other cars made it. Watch and learn, let me show you how it goes. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Yep. I'm an ex drug dealer, and I'll be your sub today. Two milligrams of fentanyl can be lethal. A lethal dose is in here. Who gets it, I won't know. It's cheap, it's potent, and it's profitable. The sad reality is fentanyl is being mixed into everything now. More kitchen now. Welcome back to Hello, Mayor. We're joined now by my favorite Andrew Simon, president and CEO of Fremont Street Experience. We know not everyone has a ticket to Allegiant Stadium for the game, but that doesn't mean you still can't get it on in the spirit of the Super Bowl 58. Here we are. So let's brag. Tell us about what's going on downtown. What are you doing in the Fremont Street Experience in downtown? Mayor, we're having the excessive celebration bowl bash at Fremont Street. Ooh. Four days and nights of partying on the street. Ooh. And the most important part, it's free. Free like Fremont, free, free, free. Awesome. Everything we're doing is free to all the tourists that come. On Thursday night, we're having the legendary band Starship play at eight o'clock for free. Friday oh night, gosh. we go into country music. Up and coming star oh, Chris that. Lane is playing. And that is free at Third Street. But Saturday night, we're doing something so special. One of the biggest bands we've ever had on Fremont Street. It costs a fortune to us, but it's free to the guests. We have The wow. Offspring playing at Third oh Street my. Stage. If you take a look on Spotify, their songs, their top few songs have almost 4 billion people who have listened to those songs in the last year. So The Offspring are huge. And it was a huge get for us at Fremont Street and it's free. Now, wait a minute, you got a billion people. I know <laughs> Fremont Street from New Year's. How are we gonna have a crowd that's manageable? Yeah. And um, now, what? first go back yeah. to the very first performance. Um, first Street, Starship. Uh, all right, Starship. What are the hours, when, how long is that on? Sure, 8 p.m. at First Street, and that's okay. on Thursday night of Super Bowl. Okay. Friday night? Country, again, 8 p.m. every night is okay. when the party starts with the free band. And which stage that went on? Third Street. Street. That's the big stage. The big one. And then Saturday night, Offspring again at the big stage. And we're expecting tens of thousands of people hopefully to show up and have the excessive celebration bash on Fremont Street. And remember, everybody, <laughs> if you just heard this free offer, please be kind and gentle to your neighbors standing there. This is gonna be, I mean, I know from New Year's Eve, at least 23 of them, that it is packed down there. Yeah. So uh, tell us, uh, they can buy drinks. I mean, when you said yeah. excessive enjoyment. Yeah, so you're gonna win prizes if you're having a good time. Part of the whole uh, marketing towards this mm -hmm. event that the Super Bowl committee did and LVCVA early on was excessive celebration. Right. So we kind of went along. We're gonna throw the flag if we see you having a really good time and you can win prizes, t-shirts, hats, different sweatshirts. We're gonna be oh, looking wow. around for people having a good and safe time. And to your point, since the last time we spoke, we opened our new police substation on Fremont Street. So now we have the city marshals, Metro, and our security all under one roof, 9,000 square feet, to make sure it's safe for everybody who comes downtown. Now, how about age restrictions? I mean, can um, are you going to have to show ID? Can I bring my grand? child who's five or are you saying no we really want yeah, adult this crowd. is a little bit doing? older at night you know we, we prefer the okay. older but again we do allow kids to come to concerts and have a good time have a great time on Fremont Street that's the key 
You know, I am on the host committee, the events um, and hospitality chair with my friend Don Ross at Caesars. Okay. And while we were looking at all the events for the Super Bowl, one thing kind of came clear to me was that we need more free events. And there's great events that are going on. But like you said earlier, not everybody can get a ticket to the Super Bowl. Not everybody's going to the Sports Illustrated party or to the Gronk party but everybody can come to Fremont Street and do it free and see bands that would cost them hundreds of dollars to now see anywhere else. Now how about driving? Now one of the things we have, we have this free loop. It's the downtown loop and there, it's on a rotation and you can check it on your cell phone on the Go Vegas app. But if they were to drive down, uh, parking, what, are, what about things like that? Have you uh, any suggestions? Yeah, there? we have plenty of parking at the 4th Street garage that we have on Fremont Street, the big red garage. When okay. you come down there, we'll have plenty of spots for everybody. I think we sell out maybe once a year, and that is usually New Year's Eve when you're there. And they probably come to see you. That's the oh, reason yeah, for the right. sellout, right? Yeah, but, right. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we will have plenty of spots for everybody to have a good time. But take you know the loop or take Uber, if that's fine, or take Lyft. Um, just do whatever you can that I week. understand too that uh, Derek Stevens with his entertainment center, it's not a certified or whatever it's called, Super Bowl something, but it is in fact an event where people can buy tables, have food, have drink, is that? at the event center? Yeah, that's not? correct. So at 11 a.m. he'll open his doors on Super Bowl Sunday and he will also have a watch party. So like he's done in years past, you can watch the Super Bowl and that's free to get into for anybody. And to your point, if you want special VIP seating, your man cave or any of those types of things, you pay a little extra. But to just come in and watch the game is free. And that's really what downtown's all about. We are the value, we're the place to be. We're where you want to be Super Bowl week. Well, and it's wonderful because everything's the restaurants, our, our beer breweries and everything, one shop after another. It's close, easy to walk. Well, I'm not sure if there are a billion people. <laughs> it's easy to walk around. <laughs> well, but, and to be fair, I was saying billions of listens to you of the songs. Know. You know, we will be safe. I don't want fire and safety and no. police and everybody worried. We do this right. We make sure we have it well, under I know control. Safety is the first thing always. That's right. And, and there'll so, be metal detectors to go through and all the things that we do okay. for all our concerts on Fremont Street to keep people safe. So I think probably what we would do on the 4th of July or New Year's Eve is no, you know, no strollers, nothing like that. Right. Uh, bags that no keep them very, yes, yeah, small seafood, uh, see-through bags, uh, no glass, and uh, just to come down. I'm excited. What what sort of uh, I love these competitions. What are they? How how do I show without getting in trouble that I'm having a good time that you would give me? That's something? right. You might show up in your favorite gear. You might jump up and down. You might start a chant for your team. I'm a Jets fan, which doesn't do much in this world. No, but if don't. I were to do the J E T S Jets 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 and do okay. my whole thing, that might get you an excessive celebration flag. Might get you some T-shirts, some swag, some great things. Um, like also Sam said, we do have Super Bowl letters set up nearly seven to oh. eight feet uh, high that you can only see at the airport and on Fremont Street for selfie moments to get pictures of you really celebrating the Super Bowl here. And what are you having on the canopy during, uh, during the time? What so, will be going on? We will have graphics up there from football graphics to all the great stuff going on to the concerts, but it will be football themed all week and it will be themed the excessive celebration bash on Fremont Street Experience. Will there be any ID? Do I have to wear a bracelet, get a bracelet or anything? I just come on down you and- Just come on down. There's no tickets. There's no favorites. Everybody's a VIP on Fremont Street. See, isn't that fabulous? We're so excited and we've run out of time. I mean, nobody's luckier than Las Vegas. We're known worldwide because we know how to have a good time and we are excited that you're gonna be joining us. So thank you at home for watching and make sure you never miss an episode. Just scan our QR code on your screen to subscribe to our newsletter. And we'll see you soon again for another episode of Hello Mayor. And I wish I could tell you which team I'm voting for, but I won't.